good day once again. So this, this recording is about, it's a continuation of advanced SQL, particularly about stored procedures. So at the end of this of this discussion, you are expected that you will learn what stored procedure is and its advantages and disadvantages and how to write MySQL stored procedures with parameters and even without parameters. Okay. So we have here a definition on what stored procedure is. So a stored procedure is a segment of a declarative SQL code, which is stored in the database catalog, meaning it is stored in your database along with your tables. So a stored procedure can be invoked by a program, a trigger, or even another stored procedure. A stored procedure, which calls itself is a recursive stored procedure. So it's similar to your recursive function in your programming. That is a, a function calling itself. Then a stored procedure or a stored function is a program that is stored within the database as and compiled when used. So that is on demand, depending kung kanusas na gamitan. And stored procedures can receive input parameters and they can return results. So we have stored procedures can be called from standard languages, scripting languages, and when you say scripting languages, pwede siya, koan, kami, pwede siya sa inyuhang PHP and other scripting languages. Then you have the SQL command prompt. Okay. So the advantages of stored procedure is that it increases performance of application because it will only be invoked or activated the moment you will call it. So, dili siya termi agihan sa inuhang code. It reduces traffic between application and database server. And then, it is reusable and transparent to any application which want to use it and, of course, it is secure. However, if we have advantages, we also have disadvantages. So this can make the database server high load in both memory and processors. It only contains declarative SQL, difficult to, to debug, not easy to write and maintain. So let's have here the basic syntax of stored procedure. So you have here the delimiter. So take note, uh, let's, let's discuss the delimiter first. Take note that in, in database, the default delimiter in MySQL is the semicolon. Now, remember that SQL works line by line. It will read, it will read your program line by line. The moment it will encounter a semicolon, that line of code will be executed. Okay, so per line. However, in a stored procedure, we don't want to execute the code line by line. We want to execute a block of code for it to be functional. So that is why we have to override the delimiter. So instead of using the semicolon delimiter, which is used by default in MySQL to, to, to read your line, each line of SQL code, we have to override it so that we can execute a block statement. So first we have to define what delimiter we will be using. So we have the reserve word delimiter and then we can use any symbol. You can have double bar, the, uh, double dollar sign. So any symbol will do for as long as you define it in your delimiter. Okay. And then you have here your create procedure command, the create procedure, and the name of your procedure. And then you have the begin and the end. Begin will tell the compiler that after the begin line, the block of code will be executed. And then you have the end, it marks the end of the block of code and the end of your delimiter. Okay, end of the delimiter, so close your delimiter. So meaning whatever is inside this block of code will be executed as one, not line by line. And then we have it here so that you will return by, de uh, return by default the delimiter to 
semicolon para mabala siya ang read line by line. So this is an example of how you create a full procedure. Okay, so let's try to let's try to to what they call this one. Have an illustration in creating sort procedure. So we will be using Bike Factory, the Bike Factory database. Now let's go to let's go to our SQL. Yeah, let's. Let's go to our SQL. So let us try to create a procedure that will count the managers in your staff. Meaning you have staff, but among those staff or among those people, pila ka buok ang manager ang rango. Or ang designation is manager. Okay? So sa to'y buhat ang primero, you have to define a delimiter. So delimiter, Pwede double forward slash. Pwede gani. Ano? Okay, then uh, try na to na. Delimiter. Then create procedure. The name of the procedure count. Count managers. So I will count the number of managers in my employee. Kung pila ka buok, ang designated as managers. And then I have here begin. I have here begin and then I will try to indent it so that my code will be more readable. So declare, I will declare a variable inside my procedure. Declare total of type int. So this is how you declare. So notice that we still have, we still have semicolon here. But it will not be ex executed line by line. It will be executed uh, by block. It will only be executed the moment the end code will be viewed. So declare, I have to declare my variable total of type in and then select count. Uh, manager ID because you have manager ID. If you will check our staff table, if you'll check our staff table, we have here we have here manager ID column. Okay, so count manager ID, and then I have into meaning whatever is the output. Of this, of this query will be placed in the total variable that I have declared from the table staff. Okay. And then in order for you to view the total, uh, the, the value of the total variable, you just have to select total. And I have here end. And of my procedure, and then I will return my delimiter. Never mind those XX there, it will work. Okay, we're, I cannot see the bottom. So you have an error in your syntax near position 10. Where is the it's here. Try to remove this. Select total. Procedure already exists. So if if you will still encounter error, try to check. If it exists, if it, it has this, it has this error code here, try to check your database if it exists. 
So all you have to do is to refresh your page to my admin. So you should be able to see the procedures menu here. If you will expand, you will notice that you have created the account manager's procedure. So do not panic whenever you, you encounter this error. Always check if the, if the procedure already exists, then you can use the procedure. So the question now is how will you use the procedure or how will you invoke the procedure? Simply call the procedure, okay? So you have here call and then the procedure name, which is count manager. Semicolon. So automatically it will give you or it will display nine, meaning we have nine managers in our bike source or bike factory database okay so that's how a procedure without a parameter works and also that's how a procedure with a variable inside it works okay so let's go now to procedures with parameters so take note that when you're going to use variable in, in a stored procedure, that variable is only applicable inside that particular procedure. If you want to access that variable using another procedure, it will not be possible. So it is local. So if you will recall your programming, we have this variable scope, we have the local variable and the global variable. So the variable inside the procedure is what's called a local variable, meaning local to that particular procedure, okay? And you can assign values to variables. So you can set or initialize the value of your variable. So let's try to, to check Sort procedures with parameters. So you have three types of parameters. You have the in, the out, and in out parameters. So let's have this one by one. So when you say in parameter, the mode here, so we have parameter, so the mode here refers to the type of parameter. It can be in, out, or in out. So this in out behaves differently between the out and the in, okay? So let's try to check. So I have there, the I defined there the delimiter, and then I created a procedure, and then I have here the in parameter and the body of my procedure. So let's try to have, to create another procedure in our bike factory database. So this time, let's go to our SQL tab. So I have here my solution. So what I wanted to do is to display the category name of the bike the, that we have or of the products that we have. Okay, so I have here delimiter. So Every time I will create a procedure, always start that with the delimiter. Delimiter, see, can I put it on the new one? Create procedure, spelling, procedure. Take note how wrong spelling wrong. Okay, create procedure, and then procedure name, that is product category. And then my, my mode, which is the, the in parameter, my parameter name, cat category name, then my data type, in this case, barcode. The length, let's type my 50. So let's have here begin. Begin, I have select all from product. Some product join. So notice I can have join in my procedure. Join 
on product dot category ID is equal to categories that category ID where I I intend to use this line by line for for easier debugging and for readability where category name which is the parameter name that you have category name is equal to category category no uh category that name category dot no it's not that name category name from our database category name then i have the end and delimiter Let's just try to proceed. So at line one, there's the delimiter. So we have that. The product. So notice again, we have an error, but we have here product category already exists. So delete matens, just refresh. So you have now our product category. Now let us try to check product. Uh, and category C1. So for the product, I, for the categories, you have category name, children, bicycles, cruisers, electric bikes, and etc. etc. Let's try to check road bike, the category name road bike. So let's call the procedure call and then the procedure name product product category and then the parameter what is the parameter road road bike road bike I check. then it will return all the product ID with the category name road bike so in line check product ID Pero road bikes iya ang categorization. Okay? So that's how you use uh, in operation in your procedure or in parameter in your procedure. Now let's go with the out parameter. So for the out parameter, you can use it along with your in parameter. So in here, you created a parameter count order by status, which will take an input parameter or in parameter order status and output the total of that particular status. So let's try to check. I will have to check with my dependable in parameter, I mean, código. So I have here is that. The limiter. The limiter. So A procedure. My, the name of my procedure is count customers order status. A parameter I have in is or or here or, or status refers to the order status uh, of type var car no order status no one two three type in and and I have an out parameter total count of five ends also. So begin. Begin. I have here select count 
customer ID into total count, total count, yeah, from orders from from orders of where status or status or status is equal to order status now yeah, order status and then next one We must create the procedure, then we try to call the procedure. Let it refresh. So now I must make some customer order. I will call um, customer order status. Parameter na to in is yes, the status. Example, it try natin sa rin yung mga status na to. Eri. Order status. Apply. One, two. One, two. Sangta. Two. And then. Total count. Select at total count. Try to check. Not shy. Uh, oops, the order status that we have here. Let's try to check. It should be underscore. So the update na nasa isa. So let's try to call it again. So you have here 63 orders of status 2 as your output. We also now go to the in out parameter. So we have here the limiter that will set a counter. So it will, it will, what we call this one? It will have an in out that is, you, when you say in out, it, it can accept a value. And it will be used, or that parameter can accept a value and will be used as your, uh, in your output. So I have here the in out parameter count of type in and the in parameter in inc or ink of type integer also. So, so set count is equal to count plus one. So the moment nga ino siyang equal, the set mo ang counter to what is. It's default value, and then it increment mo siya as to how much depends on the increase na input. Okay, so when you call that one, set up counter. So when you say up counter, you have this up sign so that you can access the variable inside your your procedure. So initially, you set the counter, the in out in out parameter counter to one. Okay, and then call set counter one. So one ang value ani dire. One ang value ni at counter. And then di ba na siya in parameter nga ink so mag increase of one. So ang output ani niya is two. Pag two na siya di ba si counter. Remember, count is equal to count plus ink. So two na siya. Ink here refers to the increase. Two na siya. Now, nag-call na po ni mo si set counter o balik. So, two na ang default value, di ba? Based sa kaning 
based on ni 2 na ang value sa imong counter. So, 2 na ni siya. We increase the pwede mo siya 1. So, the counter is will have now the value 3. Nag-call na po kagbalik ni, ni procedure, set counter. So, set counter now is 3. Increase it with 5. So, you have 8. Now, if you will, if you wanted to display the value of the counter in out parameter, just have select at counter, and then it will give you the eight or the latest value that it has. Okay. So dropping a procedure, same in dropping a table. Drop procedure and then the procedure name. So that's it for procedures.